bacterial disease, uh, as you know, probably can cause in plants a marked reduction in uh, yield production uh, and a severe economic damage. You can see a picture on the fruit, or tomato fruits, that we found in Pianura Padana. Uh, si, si, Pianura Padana, that uh, you can see severe bacterial spot disease caused by Xanthomonas eu vesicatoria. It's a dangerous, very dangerous disease. But probably you know that uh, other two important uh, diseases are very dangerous in Italy. Fire blight disease caused by Ervinia milovora on peers as well as in apple. Destructive disease uh, starting to appear in Italy in, in 1997. Uh, as well as the, another bacterial disease uh, is bacterial canker on kiwi fruits on actinidia plants caused by Pseudomonas syringe Padova actinidia. I know that uh, Dr. Scortichini presented you a seminar, a specific seminar on this disease, important disease, pandemic disease. It's present in all around the world. Many other bacterial disease reduce crop production. You can have uh, symptoms on the leaf, leaf spot, bacterial spot. You can have a soft rot disease like, uh, like this. This is the Ralstonia solanaceum, not soft rot, wilting. And in potato, you can also have a soft rot. Uh, olive knot disease, a tumor, the presence of a tumor, and many other diseases that can reduce the, the production, crop production, each year. Uh, probably it's, a, uh, it's important to remember the lifestyle of a phytopathogenic bacteria. We can have biotrophic bacteria, or better, hemibiotrophic bacteria, like uh, uh, Xanthomonas citri, subspecies uh, uh, Malvaceaarum, that attacks cotton. Uh, biotrophic or better, hemibiotrophic bacteria uh, don't kill the, the, the cells, respect the vitality of the cells to obtain, to uptake nutrients. In the other opposite case, you can have a necrotrophic bacteria that kills the cells uh, through the production of a phytotoxin, uh, of a degradative enzyme, a pectolytic enzyme, and many other, many other enzymes that degrade the, the plant cell wall and then live on, this, on, the, on the organic matter. Like, for example, uh, uh, Pectobacterium carotovorum that attack uh, to potato tubers, a soft rot disease. The problem is that uh, it is difficult to control uh, bacterial diseases. The best strategy, friendly, uh, environmental friendly strategy, is the use of resistance cultivars. But uh, However, resistant plants are often not available for many crops. The resistance could be overcame. Uh, we observed that in Pianura Padana, for example, the appearance of new races of a Pseudomonas syringe tomato, the agent of bacterial speck diseases, due to the, the cultivation on a large scale, a resistance cultivar specific cultivar resistance uh, species containing the gene, resistant gene PTO. Uh, the bacterium is able to, was able to overcome this disease. Another strategy is a chemical control through copper compounds. Application of copper compound, however, can lead to a reduced efficacy for the appearance of resistance uh, strains of the bacterium. It's very, very easy. To have when the farmer use uh, uh, repeated uh, application of a copper compound, it is very easy to have uh, uh, resistance strains. So the efficacy of the compound of this compound degrees. Another strategy is the use of uh, antibiotics, for example. Antibiotics are banned in many countries, Italy included, and their efficacy for example, in Japan, USA, in Brazil, it's possible to use, I, I know, uh, could be reduced for the appearance of resistance strains. One strategy 
that is emerging and that is and that it is just used in some cases is based on the exploitation of induced resistance phenomenon, which is the activation of the defense each plant has got. The plant immunization. Plants have, have not the immunity apparatus, but it's possible to, to activate the own defense that each plant has. Uh, before getting in the heart of my talk, uh, I, I, I'd like to underline some uh, the brief, brief history of induced resistance and some basic concept on plant immunity. The research on vaccination carried out in the 19th century by the fathers of immunology, Jenner and Pasteur, stimulated some French researchers to verify whether the plants were able to acquire resistance. In 1901, Bovary and Rai demonstrated that attenuated strains of Botrytis cinerea, a necrotrophic uh, fungus, were able to protect begonia plants against the same pathogen. They autoclaved the, the strains of Botrytis cinerea, they uh, uh, applicate uh, 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 the, 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 to a soil drench, as a soil drench to the roots of a begonia, and the plants were protected. In 1930, Carbone and Arnaudi, two Italian researchers, ra uh, wrote a, a revolutionary book for that time, uh, the Immunity, l'immunità delle piante, Istituto Sieroterapico Milanese. It's a book, a very interesting book. Uh, if you read the, the, ter the third chapter, you can read the first sentences. The possibility of plant vaccination was refused a priori by many scientists. We are in 1930. Uh, the immunity is reserved to animal, not to, to plants. So you can imagine the difficulty that that author had to um, gaining, uh, gaining acceptance by the scientific community. Uh, as concern the plant immunity, we can say that beside pre-existing defenses, for example, plant can resist because uh, um, since they have uh, they have more waxes on the su surfaces, and this uh, situation renders the plants more resistant. Uh, or uh, they have uh, less uh, stomata, and then the stomata, many, many pathogens enter through the stomata, and this is a pre-existing defense. Uh, in addition to this kind of defense, defense plant contrast the pathogen attacks through a first line of uh, inducible defenses triggered by pathogen uh, compound. Uh, as in, in animals, we say pathogen-associated molecular pattern, PAMP. This resistance is called PTI, the resistance triggered by PAMP. Uh, function as PAMP, many components of bacteria, for example, or fungi, uh, we can mention flagellin, the component of the flagella, Harpins, harpin are protein produced by, the, uh, by many gram-negative bacteria that constitutes the, uh, a part of the HRP pilus that is a, 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 a type third secretion system. Throughout the plants inject, the bacterium inject into the plants a cocktail of the ephthor. The ephthor. The harpin uh, are involved in the formation of the traslocon. The traslocon is a protein that uh, is able to integrate in the plasma membrane of the plants. Other uh, pumps are lipopolysaccharide, elongation factor, and many other, many other compounds. As concerned the, the fungi, we have a chitin. Chitin is a component of the uh, uh, fungal cell wall. Beta glucans that are component of the cell wall, uh, the fungal cell wall, ergosterol, uh, xylenase, for example. The plants are able to recognize 
the pumps through receptor, a specific plant receptor. Two types of receptor are described. Leucine-rich repeat receptor kinases and the lysine motifs. Both of them, of this receptor, has the uh, kinase domain inside the, inside the plant cell to transducer, as transducer of the, the signals, a transmembrane uh, domain to anchor to the, 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 plant, uh, the, the plant cell, the, to the membrane, and the external domain that, uh, uh, that, uh, that are able to bind directly or indirectly to pumps or other, or other uh, foreign substances. Uh, lysine rich repeat receptor or lysine modif. In this uh, scheme, you can see the first line uh, of defense, PTI, pump trigger immunity. You can see a bacterium, uh, the flagella. Uh, you can hypothesize that the flagella function as a pump. Pump are recognized by the receptors. You, we uh, initiate a cascade of events that leading to the immune response. But the, the pathogen, many gram-negative bacteria like, uh, belonging to the genus, uh, uh, to the genus Pseudomonas, Xanthomonas, Panthea, Erbinia, Ralstonia, uh, Pectobacterium, are able, are produced the pilus HRP, hypersensitivity and pathogenicity, through uh, and they use, to inject, they use to inject a cocktail of effectors inside the plant cell. These effectors, many of these effectors are able to suppress the plant, the PTI, the pump triggered immunity. So you can have uh, the plants is able, the bacterium, <coughs> sorry, is able to colonize the plants. And this is called the effector triggered susceptibility. This is a battle between the plants and the bacterium. The plants recognize the, 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 the bacteria and the, uh, the, the, the component of the bacterium uh, and uh, start a, an immune response. Another line of defense is that among uh, uh, the effectors injected in the cell can be recognized by, by resistance protein just present in the genome of the, the plants, of the, the wild plants, or introduced by, the man, by breeding uh, in a cultivated crop. It's possible to from a wild plant to introduce with the, the breeding, classical breeding, introduce a resistance gene. Resistance gene are receptor that contain also in that case contain a leucine rich repeats and are able to, to, to perceive the effectors and to trigger the immunity. So uh, it's possible to activate the cascade leading to the immune response. This is the second line of defense called Effector Triggered Immunity, ETI. So uh, the first step is a recognition, then the, the signal transduction, uh, and then we can have a two situation, both of them coexisting, <coughs> direct defense response, the plants react directly, or uh, uh, is synthesized, is put in alarm, in alarm to defense the plants. We have two situations. And the phenomenon is called the priming. This is a term used in animals, uh, in mammalians. Defense can be activated direct, sorry, directly and or indirectly through the sensitization of the plant tissue so that it express defenses more rapidly and more strongly after subsequent pathogen attack. This sensitization of the plant immune system is commonly referred as a priming. 
the, plan, the plants don't waste energy. It's better to activate the sensitization of the defense apparatus. And when a, a subsequent pathogen attack the plants, the plants will be able to react more, uh, more rapidly and, uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, the magnitude of the response is very, very, very intense. In this uh, interesting paper, uh, Trends, sorry, Trends in Plant Science, uh, published, uh, uh, the author is uh, Uwe Korrat of Aachen University. Uh, he, he said, defense priming has now emerged as a promising mean for sustainable modern pest management in the field. Uh, it's very important, this concept of a priming, and then we can help we can help plants to prime uh, to, uh, to we we can able we we, we are able to sensitize sen, 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 put in alarm the, the plants uh, uh, so that they can react more rapidly uh, what is the difference between primed and unprimed cell unprimed cell containing an uh, high level of uh, dormant signal amplifier, okay? This is very important. Dormant signal amplifier, for example, uh, the candidate are MAP kinases. In, uh, they are activated, at the put in alarm, and only after the pathogen attacks the plants, uh, the transduction of the signal is more efficiently and also the magnitude of the fence is stronger. So the activation of the fence and or priming occur not only in the infected or treated plant tissue, but also in the tissue distant from the infection site or their treatment site. Mobile signals migrating in the phloem, the phloem transport, the elaborate uh, uh, photosynthetite. Uh, I don't know if you, the animal uh, biologist <laughs> you know this. Mobile signal migrating in the phloem, phloem are responsible for the, for the systemic effect. <laughs> it is possible to enhance the innate immunity of pump uh, uh, trigger the immunity the same of a plant and induce its resistance. In fact, if you treat the plants with pumps, for example, flagellin, lipopolysaccharide, and many other, or compound involved in the signal transduction leading to resistance, or inoculate the plants with a certain microorganism, it is possible to activate the defense response directly or priming the plants to respond, to respond in, uh, with the enhanced, uh, enhanced defense. Another, qual another characteristic of induced resistance, uh, this resistance has a broad spectrum of activity. It's effective both in monocotyledons that, uh, and in uh, dicotyledons. It is also effective against uh, a, a wide array of uh, pathogens, viruses, bacteria, phytoplasmas, omycetes, fungi, parasitic air plants, as well as insects and an other uh, animals, parasite, animal parasites, and uh, as well as against abiotic diseases, uh, stre freeze stress, chilling stress, many other. This is uh, an important point. Because if you use a fungicide, the fungicide kills all the fungus. This uh, resistance is a broad spectrum activity. We know at least three types of induced resistance. Systemic acquired resistance, SAR, induced systemic resistance, ISR, and uh, beta amino butyric acid induced resistance, BABA IR. During the systemic acquired resistance, the inducer are many, many, uh, many compounds, uh, flagellin, 
lipopolysaccharide, arpins, ketosan, pathogen, also microorganism, pathogen inducing uh, hypersensitive reaction, and other uh, chemical compound, acid benzolare, semethyl, and many other. The cyclone transduction is, a, is associated with an accumulation of the plant hormone salicylic acid, as well as of the protein NPR1. NPR1 is a non-expressor of PR gene 1, which acts as a transcriptional co-activator of a larger set of defense-related genes. This protein in the normal situation, in the basal situation, is uh, uh, connected the, the, the several, uh, several molecules uh, as an oligomer, it's an oligomer. Uh, when you uh, inoculate uh, the plants with a pump uh, or treat uh, the plants uh, with many substances, uh, the salicylic acid level increase, the plant hormone, the redox, uh, the, the redox status of the, the cell changes. Redox protein like TO redoxins are able to to provoke the monomerization of NPR1. So you have a monomer of this, this protein. This, pro, this monomer is able to enter into the nuclei, passing through the complex pore of the nucleus. In this way, this, this protein is able to activate the expression of many genes involved in the defense response associated with the uh, SAR. Uh, there are uh, other uh, factors, uh, other uh, uh, transcriptional activators, and then you have the expression of many genes involved in this response. Uh, the defense response associated with the, with the SAR uh, we have the accumulation of a pathogenesis-related protein. The pathogenesis-related protein are proteins that are not present in the plants, in healthy plants, but are present in infected plants, especially in the incompatible interaction. We have uh, 17 family of this protein. Uh, you can see that some protein have, in general, we can say that this protein have antimicrobial activity or antiviral activity. If you can see, they are kitinases, so the PR3 of tobacco is able to degrade the, the, the fungal cell wall. Uh, then are, for example, ribonucleases uh, activity, PR10, and they are able to degrade the RNA, for example, in pepper, this uh, PR protein, are able to uh, degrade the TMV, tobacco mosaic virus, which is a virus whose genome is uh, RNA, okay? And many other, many other uh, PR protein. The protective activity of, uh, of this uh, <coughs> of a SAR, uh, the systemic aquarium system is against biotrophic pathogen. Um, Syngenta synthesizes a molecule uh, called the bion, acid benzolar s methyl, that is a, a functional analog of a salicylic acid. You remember that the salicylic acid is important in, uh, during the SAR expression. This compound is less phytotoxic respect to salicylic acid and penetrate better in the, in the plants. Uh, so we collaborate with the registration of this uh, compound on uh, bacterial disease of tomato. Uh, you can see that uh, the, the bacteria, the, the, the uh, S-benzolar S-methyl is able to protect tomato against bacterial spec disease. The reduction of the symptoms is, uh, uh, is associated with the reduction of bacterial growth in plant. And we also determine the, the level of ASM in, uh, plant, in tomato plants. We observe that the, this compound uh, migrates very fast in the apical, le apical untreated leaves. And that the, its degradation is very fast. In three days, it's possible uh, to 
um, to, uh, is completely degraded by the plants. The mechanism of uh, action is the, only the activation of a defense response in plant, activator, resistance activator. It's not toxic directly to bacteria, non, it's not toxic to fungi, etc. It, its uh, activity is expressed only as activator and is commercialized as activator, plant activator. Another uh, system where we observe the protection against the pepper in uh, and Xanthomonas aevesicatoria. And uh, I introduce another kind, another type of induced resistance. Induces systemic resistance. The inducer is plant growth promoting rhizobacteria, like, for example, Pseudomonas fluorescens, particular strains of Pseudomonas fluorescens, but, but many other bacteria, uh, Serratia, uh, of the genus Serratia, of the genus Bacillus, uh, and many other. They, uh, you can see the, the colonization of uh, Arabidopsis. Arabidopsis plants is the, the model plants in uh, plant biology because its genome is completely sequenced. Uh, it's a very small genome, and uh, it's a powerful, uh, powerful model. And we have the colonization of the Pseudomonas fluorescens, the roots of the Pseudomonas fluorescens. You can see the, the, the bacteria that uh, express green fluorescent protein that promote the growth of the, of the plants. Uh, also in this the slide, you can see the same things, the, the, the formation of secondary roots and the promotion of the growth. The signal transduction in, in this case is associated with the accumulation of other two plant hormones, jasmonic acid and its derivative, jasmonates, and ethylene. The, that hormones are, are involved in the senescence of the plants. The accumulation, uh, the, the defense response are not very um, well known. Uh, we, we know that the, uh, there is no accumulation of a pathogenesis related protein uh, such as in the case of a SAR. And the, acti the protective activity is especially against necrotrophic pathogens. This is the jasmonic signaling, that's more complex. You can see um, at glance that the, uh, the JAS protein uh, in a basal condition repress the activation of some genes that are involved in this pathway. The, uh, the induction of the cells provoke the accumulation of jasmonic acid that is able, uh, at the end, is able to remove this protein just and to, in this way, the expression is activated. Uh, the protective effect is against necrotrophic pathogen. You can see that uh, uh, both SAR and I, uh, ISR are able to protect Arabidopsis plant against Pseudomonas ringe pathovartomato. But you can see that the expression of PR protein, 3PR protein, pathogenesis related protein transcript, is uh, uh, visible only in uh, SAR protected plant, not in ISR. This is the spectrum of activity. You can see that many uh, SAR and ISR uh, uh, can control many, many. Disease caused by homicide, bacteria, fungi, virus, insect. And then the, 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 the two type of the resistance are able to protect the same pathogen. In, that, in some cases, you can see that only ISR are able to protect against necrotrophic fungi like Alternaria brassicicola and Botrytis cinerea, for example. The interesting thing that the interesting things so that the ISR and SAR are additive. You can see the, the last column. So you can exploit together. You can treat, for example, the roots of plants with plant growth promoting bacteria. You can spray the vegetation with the in, uh, with the chemical that induces resistance. So the protection is more uh, more uh, is stronger. Uh, the same uh, things that uh, you can see the additive effect uh, with other uh, with the other pathogen. 
Another inducer resistance phenomenon is the beta amino butyric acid uh, is a non proteic amino acid is able to 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 uh, to, to induce resistance in plants. Uh, the signal transduction, other hormones are involved, abscisic acid, and other signaling pathway, phosphoinositide dependent signaling pathway. And also in this case, we have the same protein and PR1 as in the case of SAR. The associated response, we cannot uh, uh, speak about the defense response. Associated response is a, a callous accumulation. Callous a polymer, a glucan, that accumulate in the, in the, in the plants. In the case of, a, of, of a fungal disease, probably has a, a direct mechanism of resistance. In the case of a bacteria, it's a marker of, of BABA-ER. We, the protective effect of, uh, of BABA induced resistance is uh, against biotrophic and the necrotrophic pathogen. You can see the protection uh, of Arabidopsis plants against the, the necrotrophic bacterium Pectobacterium carotovorum. The, the you can see the accumulation of uh, callos as a marker in the case of BABA induced resistance. Uh, also, Homo serina uh, acylactone are able to induce resistance. Uh, um, um, uh, Vittorio work on this aspect, and uh, many of us work on this, and also these compounds are able to induce resistance. You can see, for example, that uh, Serratia liquefaciens, a plant growth promoting bacteria, is able to protect against a fungal disease, the tomato plants, alternaria alternata. The mutant enabled to produce the acylomoserilatone are enabled to protect the plants. So indirectly, this experiment demonstrated that acylomoserilatone can induce resistance. Also, in this uh, more recent paper, you can see that uh, n acylomoserinalatone C14 uh, are able to protect the plants against uh, hemibiotrophic and biotrophic pathogen, not necrotrophic. And there is an association with the MAP kinases. Uh, you can see the protection, uh, as well as the protection is uh, inhibited in the mutant, Arabidopsis mutant, enable to produce this MAP kinase, MAP kinase 6. MAP kinases are very important in the expression of a local and systemic resistance. There are many, many pathways. And uh, the, this Homo serina lattone probably interfere, activate with the, these kinases and activate the defense. Um, the, these uh, three <clears throat> examples of uh, induced resistance, uh, SAR, ISR, and BABA uh, IR, are uh, in common the, the plant hormones. Plant hormones are very important. There is a network, not only salicylic acid, ethylene, jasmonic acid, but also other molecules are involved in plant immunity, cytokinin, auxin and uh, giberellic acid, uh, brass, brassinolide, <coughs> etc. In this interesting uh, paper uh, appearing on Anna Review Cell Development and Biology, Pieterse uh, 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 wrote a, a review on the hormonal balance that are very important in, the, uh, in regulating, in, in fine regulating the plant immune response. You can see that uh, uh, the, the, the different... Uh, the different pathway, there, has, there is an intense, intense cross-talk between the pathway. Uh, antagonism, uh, synergistic activity, and then it's very complicated. It is uh, the balance of the hormone fine regulate the, in the plants the immune, the plant immunity. The question is why induced plant resistance is systemic, is long lasting as a broader spectrum of effectiveness. Induced resistance is systemic. Uh, some years ago, uh, a researcher tried to verify if the, the signal, uh, the systemic signal, move through the phloem. So 
girdled some plants, uh, strangle, strangle the stem of some, some plants with a plastic wire or similar. Uh, and uh, interrupt so the, the, the flow of the, 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 the interrupt the phloematic, uh, phloematic flow. When you uh, inoculate the, the, the basal leaves with a bacterium that induce resistance, induces the SAR, you can observe that the SAR is expressed only in plants, ungirdled plants, not in girdled plants. From these experiments, they hypothesize that the, the, uh, the um, systemic signals migrate in the phloem. Okay, about the, the many researchers um, try to find this molecule that, are, that function as a signal, uh, systemic signal. And uh, the model, uh, the actual model, is that during the patho pathogen infection in a SAR, there is an accumulation of a salicylic acid in the, in the induced leaves. Salicylic acid are, uh, are methylated to methyl salicylate uh, by salicylic acid methyl transferase 1 and another enzyme degradate this, uh, this compound, methyl salicylate esterase. This compound form a complex with a lipid transfer protein and glycerolipid and move in the phloem to, to, uh, to, to uh, signalate, to, to induce the distant leaves to uh, react more rapidly, okay? Uh, also, we tried to find the signal, the systemic signal. We tried to observe the effect of nitric oxide. Nitric oxide now is considered a plant hormone, a second messenger. We, uh, that, uh, we demonstrated that uh, nitric oxide are able to protect plants against uh, Rabidopsis plant against uh, Pseudomonas syringe tomato. And we also observe an accumulation in the phloematic sap, a transient accumulation of the phloematic sap. In conclusion, the, <coughs> the, signal, plant, the systemic signals is uh, formed by a complex uh, compound not only methyl salicylate, but also nitric oxide and many other, many other uh, molecules. Uh, we also verified that this, uh, <laughs> this uh, plant hormone, nitric oxide, is able to early express many, the induced expression of many genes involved in plant defense response. Induced resistance is a long-lasting and transgenerationally transmitted. As uh, occurs in a human being, parental plants exposed to adverse conditions teach to their offspring how to defend themselves against adversity. These teachings are stored. Uh, this experiment they, um, parental plants are stressed with a bacterium inducing resistance, the, the seeds were collected, the second generation, the first generation, S, S1 progeny, were stressed again with the same uh, bacterium and collected the seeds. Uh, the control plant were mock inoculated. You can see that the protection is a present uh, is uh, present in S1 progeny. When you inoculate the S1 progeny cultivated in a stress condition, you have a protection. Uh, th this protection is uh, higher in the case of the second, uh, the second progeny. So the, is, uh, uh, there is a memory of these uh, signals. Plant induced resistance can be epigenetically inherited through chromatin modification a DNA methylation. This is an interesting report, uh, appearing on AMBO reports. Uh, you know that uh, histones, the tails of histones, can be uh, acetylated, methylated, etc. And this modification regulates the expression of a gene. It has been observed that in Arabidopsis leaves uh, were treated with the S benzolar S methyl bion, the activator of a defense, here uh, named BTH, 
And after 72 hours uh, after uh, this uh, inoculation, uh, this treatment, the plants were stretched by infiltra infiltrating the water. You can see that the transcript abundance the of uh, WRKY29 is a, a transcription factor involved in the defense response. In the case of the treatment with BTH, it's not expressed. But the chromatin uh, uh, is modified in plants treated with BTH. You can see uh, the trimethylation, demethylation, you can see acetylation. So through this mechanism, it's possible to prime the plant. The plants are primed through probably this mechanism. Also, uh, DNA methylation is involved in this process. The resistance mechanism, is as concerned the resistance mechanism, especially against bacteria, we can have a mechanism before expressing before the penetration of the bacterium in the plant tissue or after the penetration inside the plant tissue. You know that many foliar phytopathogenic bacteria infected the plants entering through stomata. Uh, when you uh, inoculate uh, uh, tomato or tobacco plants with pumps or bacteria, you observe a closure of the, the stomata uh, after one hour of inoculation. But the bacteria, some bacteria, are able to reopen the, stopan, the, the stomata after three hours. You can see the stomata are closed here, and you can see that the stomata are reopened three hours. The, uh, this uh, open uh, is due to the production of a coronatin, a phytotoxin, that is able to reopen, reopen the stomata. If, uh, if, uh, when you inoculate the plants with uh, a mutant enabled to produce coronatin, you observe that uh, you have not the reopen of the stomata. If you treat the Plants with the BABA induced, BABA, BABA induced beta amino butyric acid, in the same experiment, you observe that you have not the reopen. So, the, during induced resistance, the, the is against the reopen of the stomata. It's an important mechanism of resistance against phytopathogenic bacteria able to penetrate through the stomata. Inside the apoplast, in the intercellular space, when the bacterium is inside the plants, you can observe uh, alteration of the same envelope, undulation. Uh, um, you can see the, the granulation of the cytoplasm. Uh, probably in the apoplast, there is an adverse condition for bacterial multiplication in the apoplast. Many compounds are involved, PR protein, phenols, phytalexin, and many other components uh, are uh, also mo volatile molecules, aldehyde, alcohol, epoxy, and uh, many other compounds. In open feed, the efficacy of induced resistance is variable. This is a big problem because the resistance is mediated by uh, plants. Uh, when you apply a fungicide, you kill the fungus 100% uh, of the fungus is killed, 99%. In the case of the induced resistance, you have the protection in the, in the uh, best cases, 90%, 8% of protection. Uh, many factors can influence the expression of the induced resistance in, in open field. The time of application, if you, how to apply the, the, the chemical inducer, for example, seed treatment, if foliar spray, soil drainage, soil amendment. Also, if you add to this, this application the fungicide or biological control, depend on many, many conditions, environmental, nutrition, genotype. For example, you can observe that the protection induced by acid benzolar as methyl is effective only in the cultivars with moderate resistance against Rassonia solanacearum. Tomato cultivar resistant con, with medium resi, moderate resistance against Rassonia solanacearum. You can see that in Equinox, a susceptible cultivar, there is not protection. 
Also, the age uh, is very important. You can uh, see that in the, in the, in the leaves, uh, in the younger leaves, the protection is higher. The metabolism is uh, very intense. In the old leaves, uh, you have 50% of a protection because the metabolism is, uh, is during senescence, so, so the plants react, uh, react uh, at uh, less extent. It is difficult to convince farmers to use inducer resistance because its effectiveness is non comparable with that of the pesticides. However, a European Union policy is directed towards a significant reduction in pesticide use in the short to medium term. Therefore, there is an urgent need for additional approaches to controlling plant disease. Uh, many, uh, many, uh, um, many aspects should be clarified uh, at basic level and applica applicative research. And uh, I hope that uh, you can work on this uh, important argument. It's very important for the agriculture, for the sustainability of the planet. Thank you for your attention.